So my good friends, this is a challenge. It's a pandemic, which like no other before, I don't think anybody in our lifetime has ever experienced this kind of pandemic. A situation where a country is closed down six months and there looks like there might be possibility of more closure, okay? And some of the challenges you notice is that there is no clear economic aid part. It is no clear um, uh, data because this is new. Sometimes we are asking ourselves, why do we look different from other countries? Why do we look different from Tanzania? Uh, perhaps why are we similar to other countries like US and so on? There is a lot of uncertainty. This for us as business people is compounded by the fact that the supply chain is challenging. And as, these are some of the things we want to think about, even as we want to reopen. What would, or how would the supply chain respond? Those who bring us vegetables in the morning, those who bring us milk, those who bring us books, and so on. How are they faring and how will they manage their path? Because remember, we are a part of a process of the whole value chain that leads to education. We do the teaching part, probably. Okay? We have accommodation and so on. There are others who solve. Okay? These are the challenges that we get. These are the inflexible, and sometimes analysis is adequate. Okay? Critical decisions that ought to be made sometimes without sufficient data. How many customers, how many of our parents today are able to pay fees? We don't have that data. Like we, we know people have been affected, but we don't know who have been affected to what extent. Hmm? Difficulty in knowing uh, how to bring the resources back on stream. Can we take a loan? Do we inject more capital? You see? Uh, do we open the whole institution or part of it? Okay? Now, all this becomes a challenge. Maximizing value chain resilience is impossible, okay? To some extent in the short term. However, my good friends, I think the word impossible is the appropriate word for business. Why? Because for us business people, what matters is the opportunity. Now, what needs to be done? You see, it is good, as we have said many times, to be excited about whatever believe in a positive future be excited about there is always a silver lining in every dark cloud it's not enough we have to do it in a systematic we have to do it in an organized so these are some five areas we want to think about and i want ladies and gentlemen we spend some time in these five areas you see we must put people Knowing what is going on in the lives of our staff, our students, and others. Doing something about it and helping them secure their life as we secure our It's Connected with the next one. Design spaces that work. You see, there are, of course, guidelines and protocols provided by the ministry on opening of school. Some of us have been going through the process of being evaluated, whether we meet the threshold what do we do about those that are given a little time? And I'm going to go deep into this. We must commit ourselves to an elastic cost structure. It is no longer business as usual. We must be very careful about short-term liquidity, even as we focus on long-term financial health. I know there are challenges. There are people who are saying a number of schools may not open. In fact, I have, was looking at statistics of other countries showing 20% of those who open may not survive. These are challenges, of course. But if you check, it's not because of our design to fail. No, it's because of how did we do it? It's not just about what the ministry told us, okay, from one this day, no, 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 no. How did we organize ourselves, manage our costs, manage our um, operation? Ladies and gentlemen, get future aid. It is not going to be business as usual. I, those who attended last time, we had come up with this conclusion. Education will never be the same again. Not the way we have been doing it. We are now being challenged into a new thinking and a new approach. At the center of it is technology. We must now rethink and focus a lot on technology and enhanced learning. The days of board and talk as the only tools are no more. It is a new now. So what are the things we have said here? People first, communicate with compassion and confidence. My good friends, there is doubt, there is fear, there is concern. Many people are, are afraid what is going to happen. By the way, could it be there will be another wave? 
That is a concern. But when you are in war, as the general of the army, you don't speak with fear. Speak with confidence. Build trust with your people through your purpose. It is now more important, my good friends, to demonstrate to all your stakeholders that it is not just profit that creates passion in you, but the difference that your business makes in the lives of people. Build trust by demonstrating that. Address the deeper needs of insecurity, of staff, of students, teaching as well as non-teaching. You see, there is going to be mistrust. And I'm going to emphasize about that. Because if I see you wearing mask wrongly, I will run away from you. And if you are a teacher in front of 40 kids and your mask is not worn properly, you create a sense of insecurity. Don't be surprised you find parents calling saying teacher so-and-so was not wearing his mask, mask properly. See, we need, of course, to be creating the environment of security. Part of this, we need some training. Suppose some of these will be needed sensitization, but it also involve fraternal correction. You see, a teacher correcting another, please let's wear our masks correct. Okay, let's sanitize, let's wash our hands. Hear about more than your employees' work problems. How do the employees view you now? They view you as just an investor who is looking for money? Or do they see you as a partner in this journey of life where doing business is part of the activities that we do? Say others. Demonstrate your care for them. When we say social distancing, you have created it. And when you're saying that you want to measure temperature, you don't just do it to take a box. And when you find it is uh, above certain level, you have protocols of how to take care of that person. In other words, think about supporting households, not just employees. Employees are part of society. Teachers are part of our society. Workers are part of our society. The society begins at home, the household. Okay? How about getting to know how they are doing at home? Is any one of them sick at home? Are they getting care? And it's not really spending because when I do say this kind of thing, people are saying, where will the money come from? Not everything involves money. Saying hello, how are you? And how are you doing at home does not cost you anything. But it shows the worker that you care.